What's going on, military cash flow family? Today, we're going to be talking about our journey through Ranger School. That's right, the coveted black and gold, U.S. Army Ranger School. Yeah, Dan's got on his shirt. I should have worn my sweater for this one, but hey, it is what it is. All right, so we're going to be talking about our experience, um, you know, what, what we did to prep for it, what it was like actually through Ranger School, and then what were some of the major lessons learned. So if you've already been through Ranger School, then go ahead and enjoy the ride along. And if you are thinking about or contemplating about going to Ranger School, this is going to be the podcast for you, man. Hopefully, y'all can take some nuggets. But let's talk about prep first, man. So, so Dan, talk us through what you heard about Ranger School, what you thought it was, what you do to prep for it, all that good stuff. Yeah, man. So what I did to prep for Ranger School, well, one, going into Ranger School, I just, so quick backstory, I'm sorry. So for those of you who don't know, I uh, when I commissioned, I commissioned as a finance officer with a branch detail of infantry. So Ranger School was just something I wanted to personally challenge myself with. It was not anything I needed to go to. It was more of a test for me, right? Um, now, with keeping that in mind, I thought Ranger School was like the, you know, the pinnacle school to test my skills or my like, I don't know, I was never type A personality, but test my bravado, I guess I'll put it that way, right? And um, it was definitely awesome. As far as what I did to prep for it, um, my preparation essentially was just eye bullock, was infantry bullock, right? Um, so I start off infantry. Bullock is basically a pre-ranger, essentially. Um, so you do a lot of rucks, a lot of lifting, a lot of, you know, PT, a lot of running, right? Um, I knew the the things that I needed to do to make sure that I pass um, rap week, which was basically a PT, a PT test. Uh, five mile, a five mile run. And then I think a 12 or maybe a 12 mile run, I, I think our 12 mile ruck march. And then um, I want to say we had to do like a buddy run or something like that, a like three mile buddy run or something like you that. Had, you had to do a land nav and uh, and water confidence course. Yep, too. That yep. too. Exactly. So um, I had to prep myself for those things. So that was my primary focus was literally just getting through rap week. That was all, all my preparation was revolved around just getting through rap, rap week and understanding the, uh, the tasks that's what I focused on. So I read this book, actually, it's called, uh, so this is Ranger School. And that was a great, um, that was a great um, help for preparing me for it. I'm doing this, the, the screen share right now. So you guys can see it right now. So this is Ranger School. I don't know who it's written by, but um, it's a really good book. And it, uh, it's a little pamphlet and it kind of helped, um, help, na help me navigate through the, through the uh, process of uh, what I need to prepare for. So basically I lifted a lot, uh, on the off time. I did a lot of rucking and, um, I was already confident in swimming because I was a lifeguard. Um, I did a couple of, a couple of CWST events that what combat water survival training, uh, test just to make sure I was good. And I was very confident in land nav as well. Um, I did go out and do more land nav. That was part of I Bullock. Um, the, if you do go to I Bullock or armor Bullock and you're at Fort Benning, the courses, in my opinion, the courses for I Bullock um, and Ar Armor Bullock, the land nav courses there were harder than the ones that were in Darby. Um, that's my opinion. So if you can be successful at uh, those courses at, in I Bullock, then you're probably going to be successful at the one um, in Ranger School. Um, so that was essentially my prep, man. It wasn't anything, anything crazy. I wasn't the best shape of my life. I was definitely in the 340, 350 range as far as PT. Uh, tests concern, but that doesn't have to be you, right? Um, as long as you can do, I want to say, what is it, 50 strict push-ups? And I mean, you know, that's the thing that gets most people out. Rap week is the, the biggest attrition place, right? So as long as you can do the push-ups all the way down, all the way up, locking out, and you can just do it slow. If you go in there and you try to do this number right here, dude, you're going to fail. It doesn't matter if they're perfect form or not, bro, you're going to fail. Trust me. Just go down slow, come up, down slow, come up. You can do six pull. I think it was six pull ups or ten pull ups or something like that. Do ten strict pull ups. You're good. Don't don't go out there trying to be like freaking fast, thinking you're going to impress somebody because the RI is going to sit there and they're going to be like one, two, <laughs> three. Even though you're like cranking them out, like one, two. <laughs> like so, you're just going to be sucking. Um, and I saw a lot of people fail that way. Um, that, that's pretty much my preparation. What about yours, Mike? 
So I'll give you a little back background story about my whole thoughts with Ranger School too. So when I joined the military, remember I was in the guard, I went out and I did air assault my first summer in, and immediately I was fixed. They'd say, hey, I'm going to active duty. And what's the most badass thing I can do is Ranger School, right? In my mind, I wanted to be a Ranger. Fast forward, um, I'm trying to go active duty, and for whatever reason, they're telling me I can't be a Ranger. However, they have this pamphlet for Special Forces. At the time, I didn't know what the hell Special Forces was. So I was like, is it badass like Ranger? They were like, yeah. Like, okay, let's try it out. And then, you know, I started learning what SF was while I was attempting to become a Green Beret. Uh, so I actually became a Green Beret before I went to Ranger School. But in my mind, I couldn't get rid of it. To me, the epitome of a badass was a Ranger, even though I had the long tap. I didn't give a fuck what you said, right? I didn't care. And what was so funny is that a lot more of the old school um, special forces veterans, right? The guys who've been in for a while, they say, hey, look, man, all this SF stuff, all this school that we got, it's great. It's great. It's good for here. But if you go and talk to a general or a commander or a senior enlisted at another unit, they don't really care. They want to see the Ranger tab. It's like, you're not a real soldier till you get a Ranger tab, right? That's what they would say. And so they would talk down. And, and, and let me be clear, guys, there are many people in the SF community that do not have a Ranger tab, right? Because it's not required. But I still wanted it. So I continued to ask, continue to ask, continue to ask. It actually took me like two years in before uh, my commander was like, all right, cool, man, I might I might send you. I might send you. But here's the thing. I was actually deployed. I was in Chad, Africa. I was on an assignment and the assignment was starting to run up and we were all, almost towards the end of it. And then I finally convinced uh, the, the officer in charge, the OIC that I was with. I was like, hey, look, we're running on the end. There's a range school coming, coming up. I can hit it on red cycle be ready to go by, by yellow cycle. We could just keep operating as if nothing happened. He was able to talk and then boom, I got my chance. So I didn't really have an opportunity to truly prep for it. But I know I know fitness enough to understand that cardio is going to be one of the most important things that anybody can work on when it comes to a military school because it's about your longevity. Now, with that being said, you have to be durable too. And that's where lifting comes into play. So I was already lifting and running. I just kind of stepped it up a little bit. Again, it's hard to run in in Africa in the summer. It's hard. In the morning, it's hard. It's a lot. It's very hot. So I tried to prep, um, was able to get home about a week before I got. So I, I threw everything I could in there um, as far as like packing lists and all that stuff. And then I drove down and there I was. Right. So it was a lot of stress just trying to get to the front gate. Um, speaking of books, though, one book I would recommend for you guys is The Coveted Black and Gold. It's actually a book about the ra uh, Ranger School process because I'm a big uh, proponent for reading before you get into any situation. Right. And what we'll do is we'll try to leave both of those books that we mentioned in, in a link below uh, in the description. So you guys can just click and go straight to Amazon. Right. Make it real easy for you guys. Um, so I get there. And then just like Dan's talk about, it's rap week. That's the one. Now, again, I didn't have much time to prep, but I was able to do those strict push-ups. I would say probably about 30% of the class was washed out after the PT test, which is the first event that you do. That's the first event. 30% of the class, gone. I think the second event was the five-mile run. Another 10%, gone, right? People were falling out left and right off of the simple task that we should, we should as soldiers, be prepared for. We, if, if we volunteer, first off, everyone volunteers for ranger school. Nobody just gets shoved over there, right? Because it's that it's that protected. So if you volunteer, you damn sure better be ready to go physically, all right, and mentally. Then we get into the ruck march. I'm able to. Oh, here's here's the here's the kicker. I think the next thing after that is the um is the water confidence test, right? So I think it goes PT five mile run water confidence test. On the water confidence test, you're going to do your your swimming side stroke, whatever. You're also going to go out on that rope, be able to touch that tab, and you're going to drop. You're also going to do a slide, right? They call it slide for life. You're going to hold on to the bar. It's going to zip line you down. And then you got to drop into the water. Let me tell you something, guys. This was the first day we we're doing the water confidence course. I slide down that slide for life. I go like this. And instead of crossing my legs, I have my legs apart. And when I hit the water, this leg went all the way out to the right. I had torn my ACL. Didn't even, oh, I'm sorry, my MCL. I tore my MCL, didn't even realize it. I got out the water. They were like, hurry up. I'm limping a little bit. I'm like, damn, this hurts. Then we go home and I try to rest it up because that day's pretty much over. No, no, no. That day we did some sort of navigating to the next lane to do something else. And I, and I was almost falling behind. And they were like, uh, 
hey, do you need something? I was like, nah, man, I just need uh, maybe like a wrap. They was like, no, you can't get a wrap for your knee. I was like, you can't give me a wrap for my knee? He's like, no. Nah. I was like, okay, cool. I kept limping, I kept limping. And then all of a sudden they made me pull up my pant and my leg was already swollen. My knee was swollen. So they put me in the ambulance. Not in the ambulance, sorry guys. No, it wasn't an ambulance. It was like a little gator. They took me to the med center and they were like, uh, so what do you want to do? It's not going to go down. They're trying to test it. It was like, it's not going to go down. Um, I was like, y'all, can y'all just give me ibuprofen? I'm good. It's like, nope, we can't drug you on that. We can't give you any type of drug. I was like, can you give me a wrap? Nope, can't give you a wrap. I was like, well, let's ice it for another 30 minutes, man. Let's go back out there. Because I knew being an SF, if I failed, oh, I'm I'm screwed. I'm screwed. Like they're, they're going to let me do nothing else at the unit, right? So I said, ice it up. Let's go. The next day we did the, the, the land nav. And I think the following day was the rough or something like that. And luckily, I was able to make it through even with that messed up um, um, knee. What I'll say about the land nav is in SF, if you guys aren't aware, we do something called a star course, which is a very, very large um, um, land nav site. And it may be five miles between points. But the, the goal is to use some of the natural terrain features to find an area. In ranger school, you need to find a point. And so I was I was pretty proficient in land nav, but getting up to those points and, you know, I'm going to be honest, sometimes they'll put the point uh, and you're going from the certain direction, but it'll be behind the tree. You'd be like, bruh, like why you do that? Or in the middle of like brush. So you just got to punch through it. So really work on your pace count and things like that. But luckily I was make I was able to make it all through. And uh, right before we split up to hit Darby phase, because they give you a slight break after rap week. No, no, no. They give you a slight break after Darby phase. So I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save my my next story from there. So that's how I prepped for it. Read a little bit, kind of hustled less, but I noticed the focus on cardio and strength for durability. And then you got there, and you just gotta suck it up and do it the right way the first time, so they don't boot you. Yeah, man. Now so let's talk about. So yeah, two, go for it. two points before we transition. Um, a lot of people think that you got to be like yoked or something like that to go through ranger school. It's, it's nothing, nothing like that. You just got to be um, physically fit. Uh, to get through rap week. And then after that, it's all about your legs and your back. That, uh, in, in my opinion, that's what it was all about. And then I want to uh, preface on or say one other thing um, first. I went through in uh, 07, I'm class 0713, right? So I went through in 2013. Um, Mike, when did you go through? You said 2016, I think. Yeah, it was something like 2016. I'll have to look back yeah. up. Uh, so, 2016, maybe. So some so some of our memories, like as far as exactly what happened, they might be just a little. I know you're listening. Like, how do you not know, bro? This was like ten years ago. <laughs> so so I'm just giving you giving you guys a heads up as we go through this. You know, we're we're trying to remember exactly what happened. I know some things uh, changed a little bit. Um, but one quick side note, and we'll we'll talk about it a little bit more here in a second. I have um I wrote all the notes uh from Ranger School like right after I graduated. Um, I'd say like within a couple of weeks of me graduating, I, I wrote like some key notes here and there, I got them on a PDF. And if you want them, I got links on them and stuff like that. It's got my actual workout routine, you know, all the things that you, that you need, uh, to be successful at ranger school. Um, at least from my perspective, that these are the, these are the lessons learned, uh, make sure you link up with us on IG or on Facebook and we'll get that to you on a PDF free of charge, man. Um, so yeah. I just want to notate, uh, notate those two things. One, you know, this was a long time ago for us, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, and then two, um, I forgot what the other one was, but yeah. It was uh, uh, that things change, I think. Hell, I don't even yeah. remember what you yeah, said. It's all good. It's all but good. To, to, that, to that note, though, to see the, the change in there, in the 90s, Ranger School had a, something called a desert phase because it was prepping them for <laughs> um uh the desert, desert storm. storm or yeah and then prior to that they had a jungle phase which prepped them for panama all right and um i actually think i went in one of the last classes that had combatives in ranger school oh they i have it in yours they, no i think they had it in mind i oh, think okay, i was okay. one of the last classes because they don't have combatives there now i didn't know right that. so okay. we have to and it's like the whole buddy carry thing and all that i don't know if they still do the buddy carry but i think combatants is out of it now so oh. so just understand that it's always going to be adapting the concepts that we're covering though remain the same about how to prepare and, and and then our experience on the next phase which dan i'll let you kick it off yeah man so actually going through it man i was i was in ranger school for a while because uh i recycled darby so i never so two two um two things i'm very proud about right one i never got peered 
And then uh, two, I, and for those of you who don't know, peering is after every phase, you'll pretty, um, all the people in your team will basically rank you um, and say, you know, where you were on a scale of, if I remember correctly, it was like maybe where you were on a scale of one to 10, or maybe they ranked you against each other. But either way, I remember there was a peer process where I had to like rank where everybody was at. So, so uh, Ranger School, it kind of kicks out the dirt bags that, you know, there's people in there that won't help contribute to a team and they won't do anything right um so and and you're going to get found out whatever weakness you have whether it be teamwork whether it be rucking whether it be communicating whatever weakness you have it will be exposed in ranger school right there's no way of getting around it you're there for like 62 days unless you're like me who spent a long time um so i was recycled uh during darby for spot reports right um so spot reports are like if you do something wrong it can be something like like simple like very very simple um during derby phase for example there's a weapons qual uh, not a weapons qual but like a weapons disassemble and reassemble and i know one of one of my spots came from just not being able to uh to do a function check on the 249 now it wasn't because i didn't know how to it's because i was like one of the last people in line to do it out of my whole platoon of people and after you got so many people doing it like i couldn't push the charging handle forward. Um, now understand I've only been in the army for a year. So I was like, I was trying to manhandle this thing, but the guy, the the RI, what he did, he gave me a spot report. Then he took the 249, set it up and kick, kick the charging handle. And he's like, see, it works. Spot report. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> that was bull crap, right? So um, anyways, I got three spot reports and I had to, um, to uh, recycle Darby's phase. And not only did I have to recycle Darby phase, it was uh, during best, I was a BRC recycle. So best Ranger competition uh, recycle. So man, you got to sit there. So Ranger school shuts down for, I want to say it's like, like four weeks or five weeks or something like that while they prepare for the, the yearly best Ranger competition. Right. And during that time, no classes go on. So I was a holdover during that period. So I had to sit there at Fort Benning in uh some people call it the gulag some people call it like uh they call it a, a couple of different names but basically i was sitting there for like five weeks and couldn't do anything like only thing i got to do was paint rocks yellow and black <laughs> like i'm not even exaggerating when i say this like legitimately <laughs> painting rocks yellow and black um and doing a bunch of like random stuff in preparation for the best ranger competition so that i can class up with the next class after brc um, and guys, understand that this, so the best ranger competition happens, but also if you happen to recycle before the holidays, same thing, same thing. So I had a lot of buddies because I was in a winter class. A lot of buddies got slammed because they had to sit there over the holidays. So they might let you go back for a little bit, but then you got to come back and then do it that way too. So there's, there's multiple reasons why that could happen. Yeah, so that that time kind of sucked, man. Like just sitting there, uh, BRC recycle. But anyways, went through Darby, uh, got spot reported the first time. Second time, went through no no issues. Then I got to Mountain Phase. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, um, I got in a fight at, Mo at Mountain Phase, and that kicked me out already. I didn't get, <laughs> I got in a fight like the third to the last day. It was after patrols. I already gotten to go on my patrol, everything right, and then uh, got in a fight, and that you know they were going to send me home. I, I went to this like you know, uh, you have to like brief your case to a council or something like that. Um, and I, I did that and they decided to retain me. So I stayed there and then I had to class up like two days later for the next class. So I had to repeat mountain phase over again. Um, so that kind of sucked. And then uh, I went through Florida and it was all fine. Uh, what I will say about um, each of the phases, Darby, uh, again, all of them, you just need your legs and your back. After you pass rap, rap week, it's all about your legs and your back. And as, as well, as long as you can ruck and you can be a, a functioning member of a team, you can actually contribute and actually try, right? Just don't be a dirt bag and you'll be okay. Um, but Darby phase um, was more strict. As I went through the phases, I, I found, I saw that as you go through them, you get more and more freedoms, right? And I, and the food is also better and you get more time to eat as well. Cause that was a big thing for me, man. I'm, I'm kind of a skinny guy for those of you guys who don't know. Like, uh, so Darby phase, I remember you had to like, it was like basic training, man. Or what I think basic training was like, you sit down for two minutes, you got to scarf as much food as you can. And then you're, you know, you, you got to leave. Right. Um, and even, even when you eat your MREs, right. Like you got like two minutes to eat your MREs. And then most of the stuff you basically throw away, which is, 
man, depressing if you're tired, you're wet and you're hungry, right? Um, and then you go to um, mountain phase and you got these blueberry pancakes, which were for some reason they were they were absolutely delicious. But I hear if you go back, they're not as good. Right. Um, if you guys have done that, if you guys have went through Rainer school, you love the blueberry pancakes and uh, you came back and tried them again and they weren't good. Let us know in the comments. I'm just curious because I got to get back out there to Delonica and try those pancakes because that's what a lot of people tell me. But anyways, uh, you get more freedoms in in mountain phase. And then when you get to Florida, it's you got a lot of freedom. Uh, the the rucks are heavier the missions are longer but you get a lot more freedom in the amount of time you eat and how you how you guys conduct your your missions if you will right so um that's that was my experience um mountain phase as far as which one was the easiest to me it went darby was the hardest then mountain phase and then last one was florida phase i think me personally i think florida was the easiest um, partially yeah. because we got a lot of lightning lockdowns. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> those, those are awesome. I, was, I would agree probably that the Florida phase is a little bit easier. So I, I, Hey, this is the first time I'm finding out Dan was over there whipping ass in a uh, Darby phase and shit. <laughs> then we got recycled, but uh, I mean, it is what it is, right? When you guys go out there, speaking of that peer thing, that's a serious thing, right? Cause let's say you got 16 people in the squad. You're going to be ranked one out of 16. If you're at the bottom, it's for a reason. And instead of being cocky and being egotistical and saying, hell, no, I know I'm right. Shut up and listen to what your peers are saying, because obviously, if they all rank you towards the bottom, you're doing something wrong. All right. And you have to be aware of that. Now, um, luckily, when I went, like I said, I was already SF. So I I, I felt comfortable with everything from the what I was. A, I was a weapon sergeant. Right. So all the functions check and all the functionality of that in rap week was good. When we got out there, I know tactics like the back of my hand. So I'm able to place people in right positions when I'm in leadership. I'm able to take charge and I'm able to shut up and listen when I need to. So we go through. But remember, remember, I mentioned that knee, that uh, MCL being torn. So this was interesting, guys. Now, I want you guys to stick to the end because I have some major lessons learned. And I think Dan might as well about injury prevention and how to not peer and 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 being safe, because let's be let's be very clear and transparent. There are deaths that happen at Ranger School, unfortunately, fairly often. Okay. And so we'll talk about some of that. So um, in Darby, pretty straight and forward. You're doing the tactics that you learned. You go out and you do your five mile um, Darby uh, obstacle course out there. It's kind of fun, actually, if you just kind of enjoy the moment. Yeah, it sucks, but it's, it's a fun thing to have. The thing that's a stickler is when they start taking you out to the field, you only get two MREs a day. All right. You need to be prepared for that mentally. Also, they are purposely going to try to sleep deprive you early on. So they're going to have all the lights on you. You're going to sleep in, in rows, right? More than likely like when you first transition out there. And they're going to have you guys standing up uh, for fire guard. And then they're going to be like, oh, nope, you're not doing fire guard right. Everybody get up, do push up. They're going to try to make you sleep deprived. And they're going to try to make you hungry before they go out there. Always remember, guys, the reason Ranger School is the premier leadership school that the military has to offer. They want to make sure that you can uh, manipulate a unit the proper way and follow orders while being hungry, sleep deprived and fatigued. OK, so you're going to go through there and Darby, try to stay awake. I'm going to give you guys a quick story. I remember uh, we were sitting down. I was one of the gunners and we're sitting down. Everybody's rolled out. I'm pulling security now, rear security to allow everybody to cross essentially a linear danger area, which is like a road. In this situation, it was it was a small little trail. Everybody got through, but nobody told us or tapped us to say, hey, come on out, right? And I was sitting there. I think I was awake. I think I was awake. But I finally like come to and I'm like, hey, man, did anybody uh, pass us? Because my gunner's over there. I'm having to kick him because he fell asleep. Hey, man, did anybody get us? He's like, no. Nah. He's like, all right. So I get up and I start looking around and I'm looking over and a dude is like, come, come on. I was like, man, get up. Get up, we gotta go. So he picks up. I try to pull security. He runs. I run right behind him. Neither one of us know what's on the other side of the road. And just I see him disappear. He just, he just and my dumb ass falls right afterwards. There was a ditch on the other end. Now I'm already injured. So so we hit there looking like a bag of dicks just rolled over, gun on top of our head. It was a thing, guys. So try to stay away. Try to try to look where you're going, right? Try to be as, as aware as you can. So we get through Darby. Now, Darby, right after Darby in the mountain phase, they give you like a weekend to refit, go out into the world. You got a girlfriend at the time or whatever. You got a, a, a significant other. That's the time that they should come. Right. But when I was able to take down my pants, then 
My knee was swollen about to the size of a cantaloupe, all right? So I tried to ice it down, take my ibuprofen and everything over that weekend, but we had to go back. Now, Mountain Phase, like you said, you know, you get those pancakes and stuff. Mountain Phase was probably the most difficult for me. And the reason why is because of the elevation change. I personally hate elevation change. If you guys know that you guys suck at elevation change, I recommend you put on a ruck and you hit a Stairmaster. And you just, just work on it, work on it, work on it, right? Do hill sprints. If you put on a ruck, go up hills, get used to it. Um, what they don't want to see, and you will get a spot report for this, if you use your rifle as a walking stick, don't do that. Do not do that, right? So what I would do is I would just kneel down when I needed to, and I would use my hand, uh, you guys can't see me, but my hand on my knee to kind of press off if I needed that additional assistance. And I often did because my knee was pretty messed up. Um, then you have a lot more longer uh, uh, rucks there. So mountain phase was as challenges for me physically because of that. But you get through, and then you get to the cover, the, the nice like Florida face. Now, um, there's two jumps in Ranger School. One is in, I want to say one is in the mountain face, one or is one maybe in Darby. It's, it's Darby going to mountains. Right. So it's no Darby going Florida. to the mountains, and then the other one is jumping into Florida. Okay. Um, now, jumping into Darby, it is what it is. I personally don't like jumps. I, I don't. But uh, when I jumped into Florida, out of all the land that we had, I happened to land right in the puddle, all right? Now, I'm already tired. Oh, and also, this, this is a lie, okay? Whoever told me this, I hate you. Apparently, they say for everybody who jumps into, uh, into uh, uh, Florida, the pilots have pizza for everybody. There was no pizza on the plane, and I was pissed <laughs> because I was like, yes, we're getting pizza. Matter of fact, we had to go through the whole rigmarole getting rigged up and we had to stay awake and everything for all the flight jump manifest, all this, while the people that uh, took the bus got to sleep. Yo, that was me, bro. <laughs> that was yeah. me. I, I, didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get uh, my airborne wings until after I graduated Ranger School. Bro. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> everybody just sleep. And then they were talking about all the snacks they ate and shit. I'm like, where y'all get snacks? I was like, yeah. I was so like oh, man. It's crazy. That, I'm sorry. This is a side note. It's crazy that oh, you yeah. say that because... That's what we were told too. We were told that yeah, those guys are on the flights. Yeah, you guys get to sleep, but they get pizza and all this other stuff. So I'm like, man, this is some bull crap. Dude. It's not my fault I didn't get to go to airborne school. Yeah, before, <laughs> you know, you know, before, off, afterwards. And then, but then they also talked about uh, golden walks. That was another time where if an RI yeah. if it was his last walk, they would come out and they would give you a bunch of like food and stuff. I I never got the opportunity to get that, but you know, that was another opportunity for that. But yeah, go ahead. Side note. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You're right on the money, man. Like we didn't get no damn snack. And I landed in the in the one puddle of water on the entire field. And that's fine because, you know, we're in ranger school. But you're already tired. You're already fatigued. Now you're like, damn it, I'm wet. And I was in charge during that. So when you land, you go straight into a movement. So my mind was a little off. Um, and what happened at that point in time, I had gotten all goes. I peered fine all the way up until that point. I didn't have to, I didn't go through any recycles. But I was so disoriented at that time that I could not get a proper count. I had to stop the unit three times and try to get proper counts. And I messed up the proper count. The rest of the mission went fine, but I was thinking that was going to be a no-go. And Dan hit the nail on the head. The dude comes out and he's like, you know what? Some of y'all are lucky that this is my golden walk. That's exactly his exact words, right? And so to, to Dan's point, a golden walk is when it's their last walk and they're just like, I do not care. All y'all get a go, right? And that's that's, you know, dreams are, are made of that stuff. I didn't really think it was serious. And it happened to happen for me on the one walk that I thought that I was going to fail. Um, so I, I was lucky that part. And then uh, you go through the swamps. Swamps are, are true swamps, y'all. They're true swamps. All right. Now, that, that um, mind. <laughs> yeah, you got you, you got to get your mind right. So in Dahlonega, somebody actually just passed not too long ago when a tree fell on. Them. I mean, this literally happened this year. Um, in 2022, I think two in the month ago. of August. It was two weeks yeah, ago. exactly. Two weeks ago. So it's it's something that like it's a real thing. People die in Florida phase through drowning and through other things of that nature as well. So you have to be careful. Now there are no alligators, there are no snakes that are really gonna mess with you because we make too much noise and we're moving in a big unit. Okay. But um when you get into water, oftentimes the water may be up to here or even more. And people have to talk, you know, walk on their tiptoes and keep their mouth out. Or you're doing a river crossing and the water is deep as hell, might be 20 feet. And the only thing you're attached to is a carabiner on a rope. Okay. So these are some serious things. I'm going to give you guys another story. 
So when you're walking in Florida, the only thing that you, we don't have night vision, guys. There's no night vision. The only thing you have on the back of your PC is what they call cat eyes. And it's just little strips of glow in the dark, like cutouts, right? So you slap them things on there and that's the only thing. Your job, your job is to look at them cat eyes and follow them. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I, I got most a couple stories. I got a couple stories. Yeah. That too. <laughs> Bro, most people are walking zombies by Florida phase, right? So they're walking and they fall asleep. If you close your eyes for a second and you open them, them cat eyes are gone, man. I promise you they're gone. So I closed my eyes one time and I got maybe like 17 people behind me. And I'm looking for them. I'm like, damn, damn, and I'm struggling. And I finally found the cat eye, but I guarantee you I didn't follow the right route. Right. So now I'm hugging the tree to make sure I don't fall into one of them deep holes. Well, my 240 gunner behind me didn't follow my steps. This dude <laughs> steps into one of those holes, and all you hear is, help, help, There's, I'm drowning. <laughs> and, it, and everybody rushed back. The RI is over there with their big ass flashlight. They hit him, and the dude is just standing there. But he's it, like up to here, pure panic mode. Help! Help! So, I'm telling y'all, man, it will play with y'all's mind. Y'all will think oh, y'all are about to die. Y'all will think y'all are lost. Y'all will start seeing vending machines because you're hungry. Like it is a serious. It's it's a serious thing, man. That but is, overall, well, bro, that's so yeah. True. Go for There's it. A go quick for story uh, about cat eyes in uh, mountain phase. Like so, mountain. You now, Mike already hit on it about the different terrains. So, like that train is kind of treacherous, man. Sometimes you're literally crawling up hills with like a 60, 70 pound ruck on your mm -hmm. back with people following behind you, right? At night, the RIs know, you know, they're trying to mitigate danger, right? So, you know, a lot of times, I think in, in real movements, you wouldn't want to be at the very, very top of the hill. You you probably would want to be like, um, what is it called? Um, kind of kind of like straddling a hill, right? But um, in, in mountains, in order to mitigate risk, they usually you know, just kind of have us walk on the, the the top of the hills if we can, if we're not like, you know, doing anything. But anyways, um, part of that, it, we're on the top of the hill, right? And it's nighttime, it's at night and we're going like kind of downhill a little bit. And I was one of those guys too, man. Like what I would do is I'd close my eyes and I keep one like half open like this, just, just so I can make sure <laughs> the cat eyes are right. Now I know, just like Mike said, there's probably like 10 or 15 people behind you. So if you're the one that gets lost, there's no hiding it. It's like, who's the next person in front of you? Uh, I don't, I, I don't know. You yeah. know. You're just, <laughs> you're, you're just sitting there. So this happened to the guy, like he was three guys in front of us. Right. And um, all, like, I'm following his, I'm following the guy in front of me. The guy in front of him is following you. All of a sudden, like three cat eyes uh, forward. They just stopped, you know, everybody, you know, halts. And we're like, yo, what the fuck, you know, or what the heck is going on? So, um, the one of the team leaders rushes up to the guy in the front. He's like, yo, what's, you know, what's going on? He's like, oh, I don't, I don't know where I'm at. Right. And the, and the RI, as soon as he hears, I don't know where I'm at. Right. The RI comes up and he says, Hey soldier. And this is what they'll do. Our, Hey, Hey Ranger. Um, they'll take out a map and then be like, show me where you are on a map. <laughs> and like the, uh, the, one of the dudes, he like took his finger and it was like, we're right here. <laughs> you know, that, like, <laughs> no pinpoint right so what he did he took he took and uh got a um a pine needle and was like no i need to know exactly where we're at on the map so he takes the map this guy takes the map and he just goes like this he just like looks up to this guy like <laughs> <laughs> and all right's like what are you doing ranger <laughs> he's like what are you doing ranger you think you think you're gonna be able to uh you think a gps is up in the sky you think you're gonna uh, freaking harriet tubman this shit and like look at the north star or whatever like it was hilarious. <laughs> you just see that you know you can just kind of tell the panic on this guy's like oh, yeah I'm screwed man I'm about to, I'm about to <laughs> I'm about to get kicked out I don't know I thought that was that was one of the the funniest yeah. and then we had multiple people literally try to put change into a tree man thinking it's a vending machine yeah. like you guys think this is, these are jokes but no you are so no. sleep deprived this stuff actually happens man like people people fall off cliffs cliffs very easily people like start talking to trees like sitting there straight up talking to trees man like it's it's kind of wild um I, I don't know i had a dude no it, it, they were right on the money like there was a dude when we was in mountain phase he just fell asleep while he was walking and he stepped off the side of the mountain now um some of these areas are very very steep this area was steep and it was thick with brush so luckily he kind of caught himself and all of us were close enough that we grabbed him but if he had continued to fall, he would have he'd have went a little ways through brush. So I don't think he would have been horrendously injured, but he would have been a hard time trying to get his ass out. So that's a real thing, man. Uh, 
these stories are funny, but the oh, the pine needle thing is a very that's a, that's a tactic that they will do, and they will give you spot reports or fail you on your patrols if you don't get it right. And so, just so you guys are aware, on the map, you know, in the military maps, we have all of our coordinates, and we should be able to tell where we are within a 100 meter radius. I can't remember the exact metric for Ranger School, but it's going to be something like a 100 meter radius, right? So that pine needle is so finite that we should be able to point where we are. Tip for you guys. Well, we'll do lessons learned here. Well, you want to just roll into lessons learned? Yeah, let's go ahead and roll into lessons learned. We're, we're, we're telling stories and stuff like that. It's bringing yeah, back yeah, a yeah. lot of memories. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. It's, it's bringing back some good time. Uh, the first lesson learned I'm going to say is when um, thinking about um, uh, uh, land navigation, terrain is your friend. So on that map, the terrain will tell you where you are more than your memory and your fatigue will, right? So if you kind of remember, all right, look, this mountain is over here. We just crossed the river. I see this peak in the mountain. Okay, here's the mountain range. Here's the river. So I know we passed that. There's the peak and the peak is at 32 degrees this way, backwards azimuth. Okay, I think we're here, right? That is going to help you out a lot more. So that's my first tip. And then we'll just go back and forth with some tips here. Yeah, so uh, one of the big tips is, is kind of going back uh, towards the beginning. I, I think the best tip that you can, the best tip that I can give is make sure you prepare yourself physically and mentally. Mentally is a key portion. You've touched on it a couple of times about like how that you're going to get sleep deprived and how you're going to get, you know, food deprived. One of those two are going to crush you, man. One, or, one of those two are going to are going to be worse for you than the other. Sleep wasn't really a big thing, but food for me was a huge thing, man. Like, so you got to mentally prepare yourself for it. And I wasn't, I mean, I got through, but I didn't really understand like how little food I was really going to get and and how quick that you were going to have to try to consume that food. I'm thinking, all right, two MREs, man, that's, I'm good with that. No, but it's two MREs and you have five minutes total to eat two MREs while you're, you know, while you're trying to pack up and, and go move towards, towards the next movement. It's, it's a different, it's different, right? So you need to mentally prepare yourself and physically prepare yourself. I've already kind of given you uh, some of the things to physically prepare yourself. If you're not, if you're not coming out of eyeball, look, you're not coming out of armor, they're going to, they're going to automatically physically prepare you for it. Right. So you, coming out of those two schools, you, you should be physically prepared. If you're not, then make sure you have a very solid lift regimen that's focused on your back and your legs, right? All that other aesthetically pleasing stuff. Dude, you need to, if you guys know, uh, know American dad, right? You guys need to look like Roger the alien, right? That's what you guys need to be looked at. Like big ass legs, you know, kind of a big back and like scrawny arms. You don't, you don't need your arms. You don't need your chest, dude. Like you just need a, a chest to do pushups. After that, you just need back and legs. Uh, that's the, the definitely a piece of advice I can give you. You got another one? The next one for me, man, is make sure that you're a team player and you're constantly staying busy. So we talked about that peer schedule. You can get peered low, you get peered high, you get peered in the middle. Two parts to this. One, if you're constantly staying busy, asking others, where do you need help doing your assignment and then looking for something else? One, everybody's going to see that you're active and they're going to love it. Okay. Two, time's going to go by faster. That's great. Now you're not just sitting there twiddling your thumbs like, oh, this sucks. You're getting stuff done. And three, range of school takes 60 days, right? It's like 59 days. Well, how many days does it take to actually make a habit? Think about that. They say 30 days, right? Or it might even be 15, but I think they say 30 days. So now you spend two months constantly being proactive, looking for solutions. That's going to become somewhat of a habit now for you, regardless if you did it before or not. And now you can take that back to your unit, which is only going to make you a better soldier and honestly, a better person. What's the next tip you got? Yeah, the next one I got is strengthen your weakness, right? Um, Mike alluded to it as well. Um, a lot of people are not going to know how to swim that was or, or a lot of people are not going to know how to do proper form push-ups right uh one uh quick story i can tell is um and it's kind of like low-key you know it's kind of like low-key races a little bit but um i remember when i went to do the cwst portion now and i'm a you know i used to be a lifeguard I'm, I'm very very proficient in swimming but during the cwst portion um most of most of people that look like me you know had you know, we're not able to actually swim, but for some reason that we just weren't able to swim. And when I did not, um, I didn't, I think I didn't put on a life vest or there was some, they asked us a question. I was like, no, I'm good. Right. And one of the RIs was like, are you sure? You sure? Cause I mean, everybody over there is like, you know, they, they're saying they can't swim. Are you sure you can swim? 
And I was like, bro, I know I can, sw- I didn't, obviously I didn't say that, but like, I'm a proficient swimmer. Um, but that was getting a lot of people out because they didn't know how to swim, man. Like they didn't know how to do a side stroke or, or they were, they were afraid to do the CB- CWST. Cause when you do the CWST, it's like murky water. You're in a pond basically. And you got to jump in, you got to take your stuff off and then you got to swim to a side. Um, now, it's not that long of a swim, but people were still failing it. So to me, that's that's telling me that you failed, failed to prepare, man. Like, you know, this is going to be a portion, right? You know, this is your weakness. Do whatever you need to, to make sure that you are proficient at this task so that when you go there, you can complete it correctly, right? Same thing with the run, same thing with the, the push-up, same thing with the, you know, patrols, whatever you're weak at, it will get exposed during during your time at Ranger School. So make sure that you strengthen your weaknesses. And the last tip I have is to protect yourself. And what do I mean by that? I, t- I shared with you guys the story where I had my legs apart uh, when I landed in the water and something as simple as just crossing them before you go down can be there. Consider that in every movement that you do, right? When you're standing up from the ruck, don't just like hurrah, hurl it over because you're young and you're ambitious and you're using all back and no legs. Right. Or when you're doing push ups, don't just let your arms go all wide and everything else. Protect yourself because, again, it's about the longevity, being able to be durable throughout the process. Another tip to protecting yourself is making sure that you're actually consuming enough calories. So remember, um, you're only going to get those two meals. Most people will attend Ranger School and come back and have lost a lot of weight. Okay. What I made sure I, my, one of my goals was to not lose weight or not lose that much. So I would eat every single thing that I could. Those MRE packets, you eat every piece of it. Even if you got to hurl it down, the salt packets, the ketchup, the all of it, eat it all. Mix it all into one of the MRE, mix it all in there, eat it up like that, and then just quickly uh, down the dessert. When I left Ranger School, I had only lost five pounds, which is very little when you start to look at the spectrum across the board. So the final tip I have is to protect yourself throughout the entire event. Yeah. Um, I have one more tip and then I have a final tip. My, my next tip is just um, protect your feet. Uh, something that's very, very subtle, something that's very, very, um, it's kind of, I guess it kind of goes along with what Mike just said, but uh, specifically your feet, especially when you're in um, Derby or mountain, especially Florida, right? Make sure you have the light boots. Make sure you're you're putting the what's that powder that powder on your feet. Um, I've seen I saw several um, soldiers, several Ranger candidates, um, like the bottom of their feet basically like peel off because they were soaking. They wouldn't take them off when they're going to sleep and and things like that. Or they just continue to put on wet socks and then the bottom of their the bottom of their feet is just bit, literally peeling off. Um, so as you progress through the different phases, if you're not taking care of your feet, um, you're not going to be able to walk. If you can't walk, then obviously, you, you know, you, you can't, you can't pass. Um, and then the final tip that I have is a very, very, very simple one. And I think we're all collectively saying this together and you'll hear it over and over and over and over again um, is just don't quit. Um, it's, it's literally that simple. It's do not quit. Right. So, and that, kind of ties into everything we've said so far, as far as all of our tips, making sure you're mentally strong, you're physically strong. But um, at the end of the day, man, like um, it's 60 days or however many days it is uh, of suck for essentially kind of a lifetime of glory. And I'm not saying glory in the sense that it's some, some magical thing, but it can be a personal goal for you. So one story I will share is when my wife called me a bitch. Um, So again, I am, uh, I never had to go to ranger school, right? Um, I knew I was going to go over to finance, right? So I, I never had to do this. No one's going to ever, you know, really give me shit for being a finance officer without a ranger tag, right? And I knew that. When I was in mountain phase, and I got in a fight, and, and you know, I got recycled, I was given, an, I was given an opportunity to call home, you get like a phone, you know, some phone time, you need to have, um, you get time to call out or whatever. So I called my wife, and I was like, man, I'm like, Karina, man, fuck this, dude. Like, I'm a finance officer, man. I don't need to do this shit. Da, 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 da. I don't want to do it anymore. Like, I think I'm just going to come home. And she was like, I'm going to tell you something. Um, and you might not like it, but stop being a little bitch. That's li- I'm not even kidding you. This is literally what my wife told me. She was like, stop being a little bitch. You, this is, it's, it's sucking in the moment, but I guarantee you, you're going to regret this for the rest of your life if you don't, um, if you don't suck it up and go through and my wife doesn't cuss <laughs> my wife does not like she's not 
type A, like strong type A like that. So for her to like straight up say, Dan, quit being a little bitch and don't quit. I don't know, man, that that like lit a fire. I, I was like, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I was low-key turned on by that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, by her saying that, I was like, you know what, man, you're right. You're right. I'm going to regret this for the rest of my life if if I quit now. So um, simply put, man, just don't yeah. quit. I know that's a side story, but yeah, I'll always thank yeah. my for that because I would have quit had it not been for her. You know what I'm going to do, man, is I'm just going to cut out this last little part and I'm going to show it to Karina specifically. And then now she's going to call you a bitch for the day because <laughs> she knows it turns you on. Oh, man. All right. So moral of the story, guys, you know, make sure that you're going in there. If you are trying to join uh, Ranger School, man, there's a lot to there's a lot you can prep for. But ultimately, you're really going to be tested when you're there. That's really kind of the moral of the story. So for anybody who is about to do Ranger School or thinking of Ranger School, what's the part that you're most, um, I guess, excited for? I don't want to say scared, but that you're anticipating or you're most excited for. And for those who uh, uh, have already been to Ranger School, what's your best tips? Go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Uh, that's about it. You got anything else, Dan? No, that's the most important thing. I would love, love, love to hear from other people that have went um, to leave their tips. Like I said, uh, we have that PDF that's free there for you. I would love to, uh, I would love to add to this PDF. If you guys are, um, if you guys leave your comments below, I got this, uh, this PDF here, my Ranger school notes from 2013. I would love to add to it. If you guys have recently graduated, you guys remember some of the key tips. I'll add this to the note. I'll even tag your name if you want me to, and uh, we'll continue passing this information forward to, uh, any new, uh, any new, you know, Ranger candidates or whatever the hell you want to call them, anybody that wants to go through Ranger school. So please leave those comments below. And then obviously, if you are anxious about going, just like Mike said, if you got any questions, uh, please leave those comments below as well. I'm sure if me, if Mike and I don't answer them, I'm sure there's other people that will answer them for you. Um, lastly, just subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate this. If this brought you value, if this helped you get through, uh, help prepare for it, then uh, leave us a comment below. Uh, with that said, this is Dan Wynn and Mike Glassman signing off.